Now, while there are still three different match types that you can use in Google Ads, all of them function very differently to how they used to function. And that is because of all of the recent major updates that Google has made to its three forms of keyword targeting, being broad match, phrase match, and exact match. And I would even argue that exact match keywords don't actually exist anymore. And long gone are the days where you can set your keywords to exact match and never worry about your ads being triggered for keyword terms which are non-relevant to your product or your service. So even if you've been running Google Ads for a long time, you need to actually watch this video because I'll not only detail the changes to each of these match types, but I'll also show you some real examples of what's been happening with keyword match types like exact match. And then we can go through the changes that you need to make when you optimize your Google Ads accounts. And just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. Now in today's video, we're gonna be going through the three different types of match types that you can use in Google Ads. And while this is a very, very important step, to ensure that you're gonna be having a successful Google Ads campaign, you actually need to also make sure that you've got a clear strategy when it comes to optimizing your Google Ads accounts so that you know exactly what you need to be doing every 72 hours, every week, every month, and every 90 days. And to help you with that, I wanna give you my free Google Ads optimization checklist. And if you would like to get your copy for free today, all you need to do is to go through and follow the link in the description so that you can start knowing exactly what you need to optimize in your Google Ads accounts. With all that said, let's get into today's training. So as we've spoken about, and as you would probably be well aware, is that Google still has those three different match types of broad match, phrase match, and exact match. However, what the difference is, is that with exact match, is that it's now moved to an intent or a meaning base. So you can actually see in here, it actually says under exact match that ads may show on searches that have the same meaning as your keyword. So previously with Google ads and your exact match type, is that if you were targeting the exact match keyword of lawn mowing service, it would operate exactly as we described in that the person not only had to type into Google ads lawn mowing service, but they also had to type it in in the exact order. So for example, if the user actually had have typed in lawn service mowing, it would not have shown. And you can see with exact match, it's even been broadened out that it doesn't even have to be the same word. Someone could actually use the word grass cutting service and it would still trigger for the exact match keyword of lawn mowing service. And of the recent changes, that is the most drastic in your exact match. Now phrase match as well, it has also put in the intent in there in that previously with phrase match, it would have to include those words, but they could be in any order. But now you've actually got two things in play that with phrase match, they can be using any order, but also any meaning. So as long as Google actually defines it as having the same meaning, your ads will also show. So what we're really finding now is that even though exact match does actually still exist technically, it actually pretty much operates the same as phrase match but it actually takes it a little step further in that the user doesn't only have to use the keywords that you're targeting because what is happening now is as long as Google is seeing that the meaning is the same, it will trigger your ads. Now with broad match, broad match has been how it always has been in that it is a loose match setting. So the biggest changes that you need to be aware of are in regards to phrase match and exact match. So that is Google's official explanation, but let me show you how it actually works with some practical examples. So let's start with broad match and the focus here is that we are talking about a loose match setting in which your ads can appear if Google deems that they are at all related to your keyword. So for example, if you're wanting to target search terms around Seminac Villas for rent, here are some possible search terms that could trigger your ads. Everything from Seminac Villas to rent to just Seminac Villas to buy a Seminac Villa to rent, all the way down to which is the best Seminac Villa into why there's so many villas in Seminac for rent or even has Brad Pitt ever rented a Seminac Villa. So as you can see, we've got a really, really broad range of search terms that a user could input in order to trigger your ad. And even though this is a very loose match setting, the reason why I do like broad match keywords in some circumstances is that they do help you to appear for all traffic related to that keyword theme. However, you do need to be careful because they can also trigger ads for unrelated searches. So what I'll usually do is that I'll use broad match targeting for the first 30 to 45 days. And the reason for this is that it helps me to discover some potential keyword themes that I didn't think about. 
But as long as you're always going through and running a search term audit every 72 hours, where you're adding in extra negative keywords, you can actually make sure that you're not wasting too much money with your broad match setting. And that's one of the actions that you will actually see that you need to complete every 72 hours in my Google Ads optimization checklist. And then when we're moving over to phrase match, now Google does explain that this is still a moderate match setting, but as I said earlier, I actually see now phrase match and exact match actually being very similar and both of them being a lot more broad than what they used to be. So for example, if you saw Seminyak Villas for rent, you would still be getting these keywords around should I rent or sell a Seminyak Villa or how can you build and rent a Seminyak Villa. So once again, these aren't actually related to that search term, but they would actually be showing up in these related search terms. And then when we finally move over to exact match, now Google says that this is a tight match setting, but I would use that very loosely. And this is now because Google is saying as long as it has the same meaning, they will still trigger your ads. With the issue being that your meaning is sometimes a lot different to Google's meaning. So in theory, this is how your exact match keywords should work in that if you're targeting Seminyak Villas for rent, they would only show for keywords like Seminyak Villas for rent and hire a Seminyak Villa. However, I wanna show you that this is actually not the case. And with exact match keywords, Google will now even potentially throw up competitor brands for broad match keywords. And let me show you this specific example here. And the example I wanna show you is that we actually had a campaign running that was running the broad match keyword of motorcycle insurance compare. But when we actually went through the search term audit and we were getting some feedback from this client that they were getting a really high increase of unrelated calls. Now with this actual keyword, we had been running it for the previous three years and we had not had this issue. So I do wanna confirm that this is a new issue as a direct result of Google actually changing its keyword match types and how it works for broad match keywords. And we were seeing this both on broad match and exact match. And what you can actually see through here is that there was actually, when we were actually targeting motorcycle insurance compare, it was actually throwing up competitors brand name keywords. So with this motorcycle insurance compare, we had no issue with that at all, but it actually started showing up some other competitor key names like Allianz Insurance, also Bingle Insurance, Budget Direct Insurance, and even Coles Insurance, and these are all actually competitor brand names. Now, previously, this would not happen with Broadmatch. And what you can actually see here now that in some keyword niches, Google will actually use competitor brand names to actually mean motorcycle insurance. So what you need to be really, really careful of now is that whether you've got broad match or exact match keywords running in your Google Ads campaign, that you need to always be going through and running regular search term audits because with Google's intent or meaning definitions, it can actually mean that your ads are triggering for search terms which actually have nothing to do with your keyword targeting at all. So the big thing that I wanna stress is that even if you've got some mature accounts that have been running for quite a number of years, is that you need to actually go through and run regular search term audits. And initially I'm recommending that you're running these every 72 hours or two times a week. And to make sure that you're not missing this important optimization action or other optimization actions, like I said at the start of this video, I just want you to go through and follow the link in the description below so that you can actually get my Google Ads optimization checklist. And I know that this will be a great tool that will help you with optimizing your Google Ads account. And the reason why I know this is because people who have been using this Google Ads optimization checklist have found it to be an amazing tool when they're doing their Google Ads optimizations. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young, and if you do want to stay up to date with what is working in Google Ads right now, why don't you give me a quick subscribe? Thank you very much. And if you want to know how you can actually write ad copy that not only increases your click-through ratio, but also increases your conversion rates, I want you to go through and watch this video right here where I share my top two secrets in how to write the best ad copy for your ads. I look forward to seeing you in that video right now. See ya.